I'm going to go into the avatar folder and into the 3D shape folder and open up one of the 3D shapes. This is going to allow us to arrange our pieces for our uh, handbag, for our tote around this avatar. I'm then going to go in and I have some files already set aside for us here to work with and I'm going to import this uh, DXF file that we are going to use to create our handbag. Now what this is is that this is one quarter of our tote. We are going to open this up so that we can use these pieces as symmetrical patterns. So now we have here, we have our, per, or our pocket for the inside, we have a handle, we have some trim that's going to be on the top of our tote, we have one of the side pieces and we have the bottom. A couple of these pieces we can do some simple editing to. Uh, I'm simply going to select these uh, points here and remove them. We do not need to continue to have that be symmetrical. These I'm going to leave. Um, this piece, which is the bottom, I'm going to delete those points in the middle so that we can better measure with what's going on. So now what I'd like to do is I would like to use our avatar and what I want to do is I want to change the sizing of our avatar so that these pieces will fit better around the avatar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my measurements here so that I can see the size of everything, okay? And as we can see here, the length of our uh, tote bag is 12 and a half. And the width, 2.5 times 2 is 5, so the, the length and the width is 12 and a half by 5, and the height um, uh, on the side here is 8. We don't need it to go all the way to the top, but we just need it to get close, so it gives us something to work with. So I'm going to select my avatar here. And in my specification, uh, my size here in my property editor, I'm going to adjust those measurements based on the measurements of our pattern pieces. So I'm going to make the length 12 and a half, and I'm going to make the height 8 inches, and I'm going to make the depth 5 inches. And so now our shape to our uh, tote bag, to our avatar, is close to the finished shape that we want for our uh, tote bag and I'm going to make sure that I've got some space underneath the avatar so that I can use the bottom of pattern piece and put that underneath there. Okay, so now I'm ready to start arranging these pieces. These 3D avatars now have um, uh, arrangement points on them so that we can arrange those pieces around our avatar. I'm going to start by selecting the bottom and putting the bottom underneath our avatar. And immediately what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze that. So that helps keep um, our piece in place. I am then going to make copies of the side, the trim, and the strap. Just regular copies of these. So that we can use these for the other side. So now I'm going to place these side pieces on the side here and on the side here. And I am going to uh, I'm going to go back to just textured surface to make sure that the insides of the fabric are actually on the inside so that the fronts of the fabric are pointing out. The pieces that are left, the trims and the handles, I'm going to temporarily deactivate them. Uh, just so that I can get my sides sewn to my bottom. I don't need my, uh, my uh, arrangement points anymore, and I can sew in either the 2D window or the 3D window to get these pieces together. And as these pieces are symmetrical, I am getting sewing on both sides at the same time. So I can use the 3D window to help me with my geography here to make sure that I'm sewing the right areas together.
Okay, this side is going to go here, and then this side is going to go here. And so there now I have my basic pieces for my bags sewn together. Now if I simulate for the first time, these pieces come together. Okay? If I deactivate this avatar and simulate, let me hide it first so I can go away, and simulate, this bag kind of crumples together which is not a great thing, but it's fine. It gives us an idea that our gravity, our simulation is actually working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my library and go into my fabrics, and I'm going to choose a very specific fabric. Uh, I'm gonna choose this trim full grain leather, and while I'm simulating, I'm actually going to drag this trim full grain leather right on top of my fabric in my object browser. And when I do that, the properties of this particular fabric are such that the gravity affects it. This trim full grain leather is very stiff, which is good. This is starting to give us the body of our tote bag. Now I'm going to make some, uh, some changes here as it relates to the, these reference lines that are inside of my bag. I need them to be so that I can use them to fold and sew. So I am going to trace these internal lines so that I can do this. Okay. And I mistakenly created two there and we are good. Whoops. I'm just checking them to make sure this one has not been traced. So I'm going to make sure that everything that I need to be traced is traced, and I'm going to do some of them on my handles as well, so that, again, I can fold these lines together or I can use them to sew to, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my sewing relationship that is on the bottom here, that is connecting the bottom to my sides, and I'm gonna tell this sewing line type to be turned. And when I do this, what happens is, is it gives me a nice folded edge so that the bottom starts to sit flat. And for now, the fact that it's perfectly flat is okay. Um, uh, if we want to adjust it a little bit later, we can. I'm then gonna do the same thing by selecting these internal lines here, which give us, um, uh, give us these corners, and I'm gonna change these fold angles to 90 degrees, okay? And I'm going to hit simulate, and you will see because the sizes are symmetrical, those folded nicely. And then I'm going to do the other side here and change my fold angle. And then that comes in. And for good measure here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this internal line here, which is this, or actually the sewing relationship, which is this middle line here. And while I'm simulating, I'm going to have on um, my, uh, or while I have my sewing relationship selected, I'm gonna have on simulation, and I'm gonna change this sewing angle here um, manually, just so that I can see it visually, and I can see it fold a little bit. I'm gonna just fold it in a little bit so that it allows the fold as we would want in the tote bag go in the direction that we need. Okay, looking good. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to take these two pieces here, these trim pieces, and I'm gonna activate them. And then I'm gonna sew them to the side that we need, where we need them to be. Whoops, sewed that incorrectly, there we go. Those are into place, and I am going to select these here, and I'm going to say uh, superimpose side, and these will go into where we need them to be. Okay, I'll move them apart a little bit, and then I'm going to sew these two edges together. Okay, and then I can simulate, and those will come together nicely. I've already folded those corners so that those are starting to lay nicely. And we're already pretty close. 
we've gone pretty far pretty fast. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these pieces down here so that, whoops, so that I can get these going as well. I'm going to activate the straps to begin with. Okay? And I'm going to turn back on my um, my uh, arrangement points just so that I can use uh, use that a bit with my handles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to one at a time uh, use this dot that's at the top to help create a shape for my handle to get me close to where I need to go. Okay? I'm going to turn then turn off my arrangement points and I'm going to move these down to where it's closer to the back. Now that our handles are in place, we can sew them where they need to go. I'm going to, I'm going to select this one handle here, and it's letting me know that this is uh, the side that I have selected in my 3D window by showing me this blue picking point. I'm going to then click on the side of my bag as well, and this picking point is showing me where it needs to be sewn in place. And I can sew these in either the 2D or the 3D window. I'm going to use my segment sewing tool and I'm going to sew these into place here in my 3D window on both the top and the bottom parts of this rectangle that attach to the handle here. And as you can see, because I did one of them, it did it on both sides. It does that because, again, it is a symmetrical pattern. And so now our handles are in place. I have, though, crossed up this, uh, this sewing relationship so I can easily flip that back. And as you can see, these threads are all going uh, straight to where they need to be. And if I simulate, those handles fall right into place where I want them to go. So our construction is pretty good. We're pretty close here. All we have left is our pocket. I am going to activate the pocket. I'm going to um, temporarily just hide these pieces here so that I can put these, these pieces into place inside of the bag. And again, I am going to use my uh, 3D window to help me figure out exactly where these need to go. I'm going to select my, my pattern piece here and I'm going to select my pattern piece here and I can see that this seam needs to line up on the opposite seam because this is the inside of our bag. So I'm going to sew this into place here and this into place like that. Now our pieces on the top and the bottom uh, are uh, our internal lines are separate so I'm simply going to sew these one at a time from the corner in so that these pieces come together equally. Okay? And again, the corner in on the top and the corner, whoops, corner in, corner in. And I like to use the 3D window as a check for my sewing threads to make sure that everything is straight. I'm going to simulate that. And as you can see, my, my pocket uh, has some depth to it. This is good. Um, this keeps it out and also makes it look like a pocket. Now what I'm going to do is this reference line here on the inside of the pocket, I am going to simply cut that out because what I'm going to want to do is put a zipper into there. Okay, and I will do that right now using my zipper tool. And I'm going to put my zipper in. I'm going to just come off the, don't not go quite to the edge here so that my zipper will fit nice and it won't pull my, it won't pull my corners in too bad. A little tricky.
There's my zipper there. I'm going to simulate it a bit. And there we go. Doing. I'm going to bring back my the rest of my bag. And as you can see now, our full construction of our bag is complete. We are ready to go in and add some materials to this to make this look a little bit more realistic. In my library, I have some files here prepared to help us. The first thing I have is a texture image that I'm going to drag onto our fabric in our property editor. That gives the appearance of um, our leather, black leather fabric. And I'm going to use this normal map to help us achieve a fabric-like surface. I'm also, in my material options here, going to change the fabric type to leather. So it has a finish that is more along the lines of leather. And in my 3D toggle menu, I'm going to turn on quality render. That's going to improve our shadows a bit. And I'm going to turn off internal line or turn off some things that won't distract us visually and turn on some things that will make it look a little bit more realistic. So now let's uh, let's go the let's go the extra mile and make this look even more like leather fabric and uh, make this look like our actual tote. So if I'm going to start by unfreezing the bottom here. And in my property editor, I am going to make a copy of my leather fabric. Now, one of these fabrics I want to stay as is. But I want to apply a different leather to my pocket and my two side panels. And I'm going to apply this new fabric to that there. And in this fabric, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the backside here. And I am going to make this backside not leather. I'm going to first I'm going to remove all of these things here. I'm going to remove the texture in the normal map. I'm going to make the backside of this a silk satin fabric. And then I am going to actually add a normal map from our standard uh, library uh, here in our Clo assets. And I can specify silk. Um, what do we have? Duchess satin. Let's add, let's call this Duchess satin. Okay. And then I'm going to change the color to a nice red from our Pantone library. Let's do something a little bit bold, high risk red. Okay. And I'm also going to change the bottom of my bag to that same fabric. So now as we can see, our bag has a nice red silk lining and a leather outer lining, but it also has a two-sided leather for the other details. I'm also going to select these fabric pieces here and make these fabric pieces double-sided so that it will appear as though these fabric pieces are actually two-sided in our three-dimensional window. If I'd like, I can change uh, the layout of my, my leather fabric here. I could rotate it. I could simply move it or scale it. Um, I'm just going to make sure that there's not any glaring uh, repeat errors going on with my texture. And we are pretty close here. So now I think what I'd like to do is I would like to add, add a nice heavy top stitch to this just, just for interest. And I'm going to go into my hardware and trims and I am going to choose in my top stitch here I'm going to choose, there's a nice, um, simple, single heavy top stitch here. And I like to add this heavy top stitch so that we can really, um, we can really see this top stitch here. And I would like to put this top stitch all the way around my handle and simply double click there. 
and look at that nice bold top stitch. And I'm gonna put it all the way around my trim at the top. I'm gonna put it all the way around my pocket and the edge of the pocket. Okay, and I'm also gonna tell it to not only be on one side, I want it to be on both sides so that in the, especially on the handles, we can see it on both the front and the back and both pieces of the trim as well. And then I will just add it to a few of the segments here on the edge of the bag to give the bag itself a little bit more interest. Okay, and I will make sure that it is also on, whoops, all the way around this strap as well. My apologies, I was using the wrong sewing tool. And I will also add these to here as well. And I will simulate really quick and my bag, as you can see, drops to the ground. Uh, I'm okay w with um, the outcome here at the bottom because um, it's starting to look a little bit more natural. But what I'm going to do is I am going to freeze this bottom again just so that it doesn't move anymore. Lastly, I'm just going to change the properties of our zipper. I'm going to select the tape here. Uh, I'm going to go into my, uh, my library again, and I have some different tapes here, and I'm going to give this something that is a little bit more in line with our product. I'm going to make this tape a metal tape, and I'm going to change the color here uh, to high risk red. That is the Pantone color we chose uh, for the inside. And then finally, I'm going to change the zipper to, I'm gonna change the puller to be a little bit more elegant and the slider as well. And then finally, I'm going to change my hardware, the type of my uh, uh, zipper to metal. And so now here we have a realistic tote bag created in Clo with a nice white contrast stitch. Simulating a little bit to get our bag to come together. We can do a couple small simple draping options here. Um, one of which would be to add pins uh, to our handles. Uh, and I'm going to do that and add those pins. Whoops, not the. Oh yeah, there's pins there. There's the pins on top of that one and the pins here. And what this will allow us to do is to move the tops of the handles here so that they stand up a little bit nicer. So that when we do a rendering of this, this will look a little bit more uh, realistic in terms of how this comes together. Okay. Next, I'm going to give my bag an overall, uh, I'm going to create a high resolution version of this um, so that the fabric drapes a little bit more realistically. The last thing I'm going to add in here is a simple um, uh, D-ring. And I'm going to add this in as an avatar. And what this is going to do is that this will sit, um, uh, this will uh, sit just inside our strap right here. I simply have to make sure that it is the right size and in the right place. I'm going to slide this to, so that it is nearly touching and put it in the right place so that it appears it's as though it's hanging 
from this part of the strap. And if you remember, we only sewed the straps at the top and the bottom of the internal lines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mesh of this strap. And that will allow me to pull this part of the strap fabric so that it is outside of our D-ring. I'm going to check my surface offset here as this is now an avatar and I will make my, uh, my D-ring as appear as though it's metal. And when I simulate, then my strap will sit around my D-ring and I can make a couple more adjustments to this. I can push this a little closer and change my skin offset so it sits a little closer again. And when I simulate, that will fall right in there. And now we have our finished handbag with our zipper pocket and our metal D-ring detail. Finally, let's make a rendering of our bag so that we can show everyone our creation. Uh, I'm going to go here into my render window and I'm going to start by turning on my interactive render. Clo has a wonderful, powerful render engine that gives us very realistic uh, image settings. And so I'm going to start by making some size changes to my image so that my bag sits in a nice place. I am then going to change some lighting settings so that our lighting is a little bit more dramatic. So we have some nice lighting. We have a beautiful shadow going on here. I'm going to change the direction of my lighting a little bit so my shadow falls behind it. I think I am going to remove my pins here in my 3D window so that when I simulate this, um, these handles fall a little bit more naturally. There we go. I can then stop my simulation and refresh my interactive render. And there is our beautiful tote bag in our interactive render. And finally, here is the fully rendered image uh, at high resolution for presentation.